In today's video, do fat burners work? We're talking science with Steve. Hey guys, this is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and this is Steven Bogran from ProPhysique.com and you know what that means. Woo! It's time for science with Steve. So Steve actually co-authored a study and it has been released so we can talk about it. It was top secret. We had to keep it under wraps, but now I want to hear about your research, Stephen, because it's something that's very kind of, you know, in our realm of, you know, focus, which is thermogenics, fat burners. Yeah. So I did not co-author, but okay. I was a data analyst. Okay. So I also helped to make sure that I was reading over and providing feedback uh, before we had our final submissions. And I was also a participant in the study as so well. So who was the author? Oh, God. Dr. Bill Campbell? No, Bill Campbell was last on the list. Is there anybody I would have heard of? No. Not Brad Schoenfeld? No, nah, it would have been like Dolan or like Ryan Calhoun or somebody like that. Okay, this. all right. So we'll, yeah. put, we'll put a link below to the study if you really want to learn more about it. Yes. Uh, and it's brand newly published, so it just happened. Uh, but it was actually a study that I did back in undergrad, back when we were in school together, oddly enough. Yeah, so what year was that? So people <laughs> can understand. Uh, it must have been- 2019? It was like eight years ago, yeah. It so was... <laughs> that just tells you, like when people are like, oh, they should do research on that. If research doesn't turn over that quickly. It's not that easy. And getting just a study approved to start, then getting the participants to stay through, then getting enough data collection to actually find out if you have viable statistics. Yeah, it's fun. And then you, someone has to write it, then someone has to approve it to yes. be published. Yes. Yeah, lots of steps. And depending, it can cost a lot of money to actually to get approved and uh, accepted to a journal as well. Yeah, um, so. so. Well, congrats on your study being yeah. published. So let's talk a little bit about what that study was. So we were essentially looking at whether or not a thermogenic supplement actually aided in fat loss. Now, how we implemented the study design was we coupled that with a kind of mixture of powerlifting and bodybuilding exercise as well. And so all exercises were overseen in the lab. Uh, there were a couple of different uh, things that I thought were nice, like everybody had to squat to death. So everyone had to wear a squat beeper on their thigh and wait for that to go off. So there was no quarter squatting. Everybody was squatting to depth where their knee was in line with their hip crease. Everybody for the bench press and the strength uh, pieces of it, yep. they had to pause on the chest. Now it wasn't a full pause, but they had yeah. to have a short pause on the chest. The bar had to actually stop. Otherwise we did not count those as variables for how their maximal strength increased at the end of the eight week testing period. How did you test for body fat? Okay. So body fat was measured with ultrasound testing, which is think of it like doing caliper testing, but a little bit better. And so, so we were, actually, I have a video on this channel where I got my body fat tested at USF by Dr. Bill Campbell with the ultrasound. It actually ch goes through your skin, through the muscle, through the fat, to the bone. So you can actually see changes. And I mean, it's probably the most accurate. I just liked the goo. It's cold in the morning. <laughs> they did it at like six in the morning. They put this cold goo on you and they test some spots on you that are not comfortable. Yeah, it's like seven sites. Uh, so the more sites that you have with the uh, body composition analysis, the more accurate it's going to be. And so what we saw with this is we had two groups. So it was a double blind study. You were either placebo or you were the actual thermogenic supplement. The people who were on this thermogenic supplement actually lost more body fat than the people that were on the placebo. So they were both taking, let's say, a drink with some powder in it, and they didn't know if they were getting... Little pills. Oh, there were pills. So they were just okay. little white pills. Um, and it was a brand name supplement that's no longer on the market, uh, but was quite popular for quite a while. It was do a muscle remember, farm Do you remember the ingredients of the thermogenic? Because those can vary quite a bit now too. <sighs> so there is a long list and it's actually published in the study. So if you want to look that up, you're more than able to, but everything in there was a proprietary blend, which means that the first ingredient listed is the most abundant out of those. And then it goes into lesser and lesser and lesser. And then the least abundant ingredient would be last on that. You know, what's funny is they don't really do proprietary blends anymore. Most brands like Core Nutritionals, which yep. we'll talk about in a little bit, they actually list the ingredient and the amount. What a proprietary blend allows a company to do is list the, the ingredient is in there, but hide the amount. So you don't always know that you're getting the science word, efficacious dose. So what was, in your opinion, on that thermogenic, the most like readily available uh, ingredient that would have been beneficial. So I think like most thermogenic and fat burning supplements, the most efficacious or the ingredient that we know really truly does the heavy lifting there and the work is probably caffeine. 
or any okay. kind of caffeine added green tea extract, yeah. that, that kind of thing. Um, now, whether or not those other ingredients are doing extra work and providing extra benefit, that is yet to be seen. There's definitely argument for it in yeah. this study and maybe some others, but we still need more research done on those things with caffeine, without caffeine to see whether or not they actually are adding the benefit uh, or not. So it seems there was a pretty significant difference in the group that was on a supplement and that was not, that was, so it was directly impacting their training. You were taking this prior to training? Right, so we would take the supplement and then go into training within like 15 to 30 minutes typically. Okay. Um, or the placebo. I found out after the fact I was on the placebo group. So you didn't lose any body fat? No, I did not. <laughs> I did not, I stayed just as jiggly. Well, I'm just curious because, you know, as a thermogenic, as a coach, I don't know if you do this, but I'm typically having my clients take a thermogenic product, not for training but for either a fasted cardio session or at a time of day when their hunger might be a problem. Right. I'm using it more as a, a stimulant slash, you know, appetite suppressant than as like a right before I go train. Right, so I think that was kind of why it works well because when you take that and then you go into training, your body temperature is gonna go up anyways. Mm -hmm. Your attentiveness is gonna go up anyways. Your hunger signaling is gonna go down anyways, at least for a little while after that training session. Yeah. So it kind of masks some of those differences that you might see or not see uh, if you're taking it and just sitting there working. So if I draw this out farther, you and I know what makes a person lose body fat is creating a caloric deficit. So what this study is kind of implying is that because there was no dietary kind of, you weren't getting involved in their diets. No, they simply said, keep your diets the same, don't yeah. change anything about it. So the one change would be that they would have burned more calories in a training session than the other group. Correct. And that could be that powerful. Or even post training session. Absolutely. Right. Oh, like, so they left and they were like, I got so much energy, I'm gonna just go for a walk or not. Or that, or they were just, they were just producing more heat yeah. and therefore burning more calories. Yeah. Is this a mixture of men and women? This was just men. So now there's an interesting thought because okay, if the men are training harder, putting on more muscle could be having a positive impact to their lean body mass, their hormone profile? But there, the one, they weren't looking at hormone profiles and there were yeah. no real significant differences except for squat strength between the two. Okay. Everything else for uh, the lean body mass and the strength was pretty darn close. Was the squat strength relative? No. Because if they lost body fat and they squatted the same, they relatively got stronger. No, we were looking at absolute strength. Absolute strength, yeah. okay. Well, I mean, it, it's pretty clear to me that there was a benefit. I'm just curious what the mechanism was I, I, I would postulate that they probably ate less throughout the day afterwards because of that great workout and stimulant kind of feeling. Um, but again, that, that raises a lot of questions for me. One day we'll be able to follow people around all the time in every research study. I mean, yeah, so like if you're listening okay. to this, you're like, yeah, they should do research like this. Imagine like to do real research, which they've done before, you've gotta be in a, they call it a metabolic ward and they track everything, your steps, your breathing, your everything you eat and drink. That's really where, the only real true truth can be known, and that's very hard to do. Yeah. So we're looking a little bit at anecdote. So of course. you can be watching this going, I know fat boners don't don't, don't work, but it it does, <laughs> even if it's anecdote. I, I think, no, the evidence proves that any fat burner that has caffeine most certainly does work. The difference is, would you rather take a fat burner or would you rather have a few cups of coffee if you wanna be absolutely sure of that? Well, let's talk a little bit about, so Core Nutritionals had a, a thermogenic product and they asked for my advice and you know I said well I have some thoughts on what I think would be beneficial on a thermogenic product because there are there have been some changes in supplementation in the last couple of years I think most excitingly the 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 resistance to mental fatigue yes that's the one thing that I notice on the new like yeah back in the day you do the super pumps you do those things you'd get jacked up on like 500 milligrams of caffeine you'd either vomit or hit a PR yeah and yeah, my friend used to <laughs> take a massive dump every time he took it. We call it super dump. They call it NO explode for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> you better be not on your way to the gym, but in the gym when that happens. Yeah. Um, for reals. But now the new products, what I notice is, at least for myself, I become more chatty, more talkative, more like I don't feel like I'm tired in the gym as much. Yeah. So those are the type of ingredients. So um, Core Nutritionals, and I also added an ingredient called KSM 66 because exercise does increase cortisol. Cortisol can have a negative impact on some hormones like testosterone. So I thought I've seen such a great response from my, my female competitors just from taking KSM 66. Why not add it to a thermogenic product to kind of counteract the negatives potentially of exercise. And it seems to have a positive effect. 
I'm just a big fan of KSM. Here, take a look at those ingredients. See if there's so you're a fan of kissing single men? There you go. <laughs> KSM. Nice. Look at those ingredients. I can't read it. It's too small and it's too dark. Uh, it's an L carnitine HCI, which is more of the metal stimulant. KSM 66. Uh, let's see. Uh, so Huprazine is the one that's good for mental. Uh, I don't see a prazine in here. Uh, but no, uh, you have saffron extract, you have limonera, you have Zoom XR, which is just caffeine. Uh, so this is bacopa, well, there's caffeine. There's different kinds of caffeine, like different release times? Yes, there are. They, so you can, and, and that's a, a big difference of how they're doing the caffeine as well, too. Uh, but I think you're looking at the L-carnitine, which can help to attenuate, I think, some of the possible, like, uh, breakdown muscle stuff. But I have to go look at the study. That's fine. Yeah, so yeah. I'll just show you. So here is the core burn product that I actually have my name on. Um, you know, this is something that when I'm in a fat loss phase, I will use intermittently. I try to, you know, I think of thermogenics as a bullet in my fat loss gun, and I don't want to fire all my bullets till I need to. Yes. I'm trying to save my ammunition. <laughs> I'm not on a 20 week prep week one slamming thermogenics i'm like when i start to get tired and hungry this is when i feel like these things really kick in yeah because it also helps with one living life doing yeah. work getting everything else done yeah the mental fatigue and acuity that you need help with when you're in a really hard diet and stressed out and tired um and it just kind of keeps you up and moving a little bit more when it's really easy for again that fatigue to make that impact on things like step count and maybe talking with your hands less and all those little things that burn extra calories. Listen, you like, honestly, like that's the one thing when I look back at my early preps that I, you don't realize it's happening because it's a, it's a new experience, but the, uh, the amount of energy you start to conserve at low body fat, it's remarkable. I remember not getting up from my desk all day thinking like, I'm just gonna make at work. I'll just make one run around the office to do my job instead of getting up throughout the day. Like you start to do weird stuff to conserve energy and talking with your hands, I look back at my videos from my first prep on YouTube. They're 18 years ago, guys. And I'm very monotone. I'm like, hey guys, this is Paul. Like, I didn't have the energy to yeah. talk. And you know, I'm very animated and so is Steven, but you'll see that stuff starts to happen. And that's where, that's where this stuff can help. Um, it, it really does put you in a different mental state, helps you burn a few extra calories. And that's really where the magic is. No pill is going to do something for you, but it's going to allow you to do something. Yeah, just put that and, and to be fair, even if something is giving you a placebo effect, that is still an effect. Yeah. And so if you believe it and you're about it, great. It would have been very interesting to have a group that was told they were on the pre-workout, but wasn't, or on the thermogenic, but wasn't. That was our placebo. You were told you were on it. Everybody was told they were they were on the same thing. Oh, clever. So, okay. So nobody knew what they were or weren't on. Well, because nobody knew you've which seen the placebo effect of where they tell somebody that like something negative yeah. and that they negatively respond. And, and I thought I was on it. Oh, wow. It wasn't until after the study was done and we were looking at the data that they're like, oh yeah, you were part of the placebo group. And I was like, you mother. <laughs> right. Because if you tell somebody like, oh, you're, you're not getting the real stuff, you're yeah. going to try less. You're going to care less, right? Of course. So when people are like, oh, Pre-workout's a placebo because you just think you're stronger, so you work out harder. And I'm like, well, but I'm working out harder. Caffeine, once again, listen to the rescue for for effective data. I'll never forget buying Muscle Tech, and it said you'll gain 11 pounds in seven days, and I gained 11 pounds in seven days. I mean, it was probably all water weight, but I was taking creatine and 70 grams of dextrose. If you uh, were wearing that shirt, you could have pretended to be the Kool-Aid man. Hey, hey, hey. The right guy? No. What was that? <laughs> That's Fat Albert. What's the yeah. guy that busts through the wall? That's the cool. That's the cool man. That's oh no! Guy. And he's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. 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 All right, guys. So at the end of the day, I, I do think there's value in adding thermogenic. In fact, it's something that I recommend to my clients. Again, at the appropriate time, when hunger is high, when energy starts to dip, we can use caffeine and stimulant-like products throughout the day. Absolutely. Maybe not so close to nighttime to where it messes up your sleep, yes. but otherwise, fair game. It should positively impact your training, positively impact your appetite, not negatively impact your sleep.